Do you want some? Come on then. Do you want this? Come on then. Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. And I'm going to give Vinny his dinner. Here you go. You don't want it? I'll eat it myself then. Oh, you do? There you go then. See, sometimes he won't eat his dinner. So what I have to do is spoon feed him like a little baby. And he seems to like that. There you go. So my website is jasonnewland.com. It's coming together quite well. It's taken a while, but I am gradually making all of my eld recordings available to download. And yeah, it's you know, it's gonna take a while. So I've also got a YouTube channel, just look up my name, Jason Newland. And I've been uploading, well, creating and uploading all the old Let Me Boy to Sleep archives. But I kind of, I release 10 a day. So I'm not bombarding people or subscribers with new stuff. Uh, or new videos, rather. And I also upload a video version of every every new podcast episode I do as well whether it's let me boy to sleep or blimey it's going everywhere or a or anything else really I've not done a lot of other stuff at the moment well lately rather but uh, I'm going to do is is I'm not a very good balancer you know as far as I quite like to just get stuck into one thing so if I'm doing for example the building the website or uh, getting all the stuff onto YouTube I quite like to just stick to that one thing and get as much done as possible I mean I can sit all day and make or create new videos on or I use Canva, which is how I create the videos from the podcast audios. But it takes, it's time consuming. I can't believe he's doing, he's, I wonder why he's not eating the food on his own. Why he, he's wanting me to spoon feed him. Maybe he just needs to be a baby. Just needs a bit of babying sometimes. He seems to like it. I don't mind. I quite like it as well, actually. Just, but the food's been there for a couple of hours and he's not touched it. And as soon as I pick the plate up or the his little dish and pretend to eat it, <laughs> it grabs his attention. And yesterday I ended up chucking chucking his food away because he did he left it for too long. So I had to get him a new packet. Which is not good, is it? It's not good to chuck stuff away like that. No, it's not. There you go. Good boy. Good girl. Good girl. So did I say only listen when you can safely close your eyes? I don't remember. Uh, also, if you haven't already, please join my, if you want to, my Facebook private facebook group it is jason newland's boring group i was going to only make the well this this is a q a friday by the way i was only going to make these available to people on the facebook group but i realize because there's only 182 people on my group i'm kind of limiting my audience because the q a friday seem to be I don't want to use the word popular, but they, they seem to be 
uh, perhaps a bit more popular than, than the average one. There you go. There you go. Give us another one a little bit more. Nearly finished. Oh, there's a big bit there. Big boy, can you eat that all in one go? Oh, wow. There you go. Right, last little bit. Clever boy, you're a big boy, aren't you? If I give you the bowl, do you want to lick the bowl? There you go. Right, so yeah, this is Q&A Friday. Yeah, for those that haven't, I'll put it over there so you can just help yourself. How about that? There you go. So this is Q&A Friday. This is when I take questions from the audience. And basically just answer. I'll get rid of that then. If you want to come and sit, sit, you want to cuddle, you want to cuddles. And uh, so every, this week I asked quite early, so I've been a little bit ahead this week. Or behind, I'm not sure which is the right word. I thought it was Thursday today. I thought it was Wednesday yesterday. Uh, but earlier on in the week I thought it was Thursday on Tuesday. So it's, it's weird the way it's going. So I think I posted the question, you know, any questions for Q&A Friday. I think I did that on, I think it was Tuesday, which has given a lot longer for people to send in their questions. I mean, it has been loads of questions, but there's been a lot more than normal. So I just want to say thank you to, I don't know if I, I thanked Christine and Jennifer and also um, Diana as well for your PayPal gifts. So thank you very much. It's a kind of birthday PayPal gift, so that's really, really kind of you. Thank you. Oh, that's strange. The, the group is not showing the whole banner. Oh, so it's still time to send me a birthday card. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. It's Friday now. My birthday's on Monday. There won't be any postage being delivered on Monday because it's a bank holiday Monday. So, oh well. Oh well. So, beep, 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 beep. You know, I've noticed the older I've got, the smellier I am. No, the, the older I've got is... I just don't get hardly any birthday cards or Christmas cards anymore. You know, when I was a kid, it's, maybe it's the same for you. Uh, when I was a kid, I'd get Christmas... i get birthday cards from all my brothers, parents. i get birthday cards from all my aunties and uncles. I mean, nan and granddad and even cousins sometimes, I think. So, as I got older, I'd probably get a birthday card. I might get four birthday cards. It's pretty much the most I'll get. So, or Christmas again, maybe three, three or four Christmas cards, that's it. And... But then the thing is, if I'd have started my own family, you know, if I'd have done what a lot of people do and, you know, got together with someone, maybe got married, got kids, and maybe now I perhaps have grandkids. So I'd be in a position where I was getting, well, I'd get Father's Day cards. I'd get the Christmas cards. And the birthday cards, but I'd get a lot more than I would now. So I'd have, you know, the kids sending me birthday cards, my wife sending me a birthday card, probably, I don't know, um, as well as my parents, but also the the grandkids as well. 
and I'd get presents. I'd get lots of presents, probably, maybe. Depends on if I was nice, if I was a nice, you know, father or a nice grandfather. And then you got extra, haven't you? You got Father's Day. So I get Father's Day cards and presents. And then you got anniversary gifts. So I don't send anniversary presents or cards, but some people do. So I maybe I get those as well. So you know I get a lot more cards, a lot more presents if I'd have gone down that road. But I think that, I don't know if that's the real the right reason to to get married though, is it? For the gifts. And the possibility of cards in the future. Maybe not. I might have to. Where's my water? There it is. I have to have some water. My throat is a, well, it's a little bit dry. Wow, that's brilliant. I feel great now. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, oh, hello, mate. How are you darling? Hello, darling. He still doesn't know what to do because I'm sitting this side of the settee. It throws you right off, isn't it? Do you want to lay down? Lay down. Lay down. Yeah. Oh, you think I'm fighting with him now? No, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting. No, I'm not. Ow. Ow. So, yeah, I've got some questions. I really should get on with it, shouldn't I? Otherwise, I'm just talking. I hope the microphone's close enough because it's not right inside my mouth, which isn't really a good place for anything to be, really. What have I got here? Uh, oh God, more. So, got no emails. Got any emails? Oh, I got a credit card company phoned me up yesterday. See, I phoned back. <sighs> I've got this, this question. I've got an email here saying, and the headline is 5.85k subscribers after 97 videos. Hi, I noticed that your latest video uploaded just nine days ago hasn't gained much traction yet it currently has one ranking keyword and 80 percent ses seo score which might be affecting its visibility on youtube we're here to help would you be available for a brief call no so I'm doing all right on YouTube. It's a slow, it's a slow, slow, slow thing. And also, because I'm not really playing the YouTube game, I'm not putting in videos of myself on there, and that's what YouTube is, isn't it? It's videos. They mine are videos, but they're just, yeah, you know. What's this? this? Right, so I've got some questions. Let's have a look. I'll pull my sleeves up. It's been a lovely day today. Really, really sunny. Ever so sunny. Like, really nice. And I suppose if it keeps it up, it could be another one of those really nice bank holidays. That was it. That's all I had to say on that subject. Where are the questions? <sighs> okay, here we go. Two days ago. So was it? So Wednesday I posted that. All right, Wednesday. I thought it was Thursday. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was Wednesday. 11 comments so I don't know if that means I've got 11 questions so top comments no all comments so I got a question from Hillary I got a question from Barry I got a question from Chris I got a question from Christine I got a question from Sky 
I got a question from Christine, from Damon, from Robin, and from Kate. I think this is the most questions I've ever had for a Q&A Friday. So, starting with... I'm going to start it from the first question down to the final question. So, the final question was asked 17 hours ago. First question was asked two days ago. This is Hilary. Who is your celebrity crush? Well, it's been a few. I don't know about now so much, but I used to love um, Sabrina from the. She sung the, the song Boys. But that was when I was 16. And that's a while ago. Celebrity crush. <laughs> What's her name? Mabusi. She's uh, she's uh, one of the... I think she was Strictly Come Dancing dancer. Now like a TV presenter. She's kind of one of them. Um, calm down. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Celebrity crush. So it doesn't have to be TV. This. Um, no. Did I... This is going to sound terrible. Wednesday, the, the lady that plays Wednesday, she's very young, but she's like, I don't know, 22 or something, but 24. But there's something about her that's like, just it's her face. <laughs> I think it's the miserable, how miserable she is. I just love miserable people. I'm trying to think. I mean, lately, I don't, I don't know if I've really got a celebrity crush now. So I'm not that into celebrities in a sense of Lisa Nandy. She's a politician. Always quite liked her. Uh, she's a Labour politician. She's, uh, she, I don't know, she's a minister for something. Um, I don't know what. Yeah, well, kind of a little thing for her. Who else? Celebrity crush now. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there is... I don't know her name. I don't know her name. She was in a movie. Um, actually, there is... There's a couple. There's... What movie was she in? Right. Uh, I'm just going to have a look. I used to really love Jessica Alba. Back in the 2000s. Early 2000s. Late, late 90s. Early 2000s. I had a real... Really, really, really liked her. I thought she was just, just, well, you know, looked like she had a lovely personality. I'm trying to find this. It's not Dakota, is it? Dakota, the. De... She's a really, really, really good actor or actress. something about her I just like I can't remember what is her name who is this uh, is she a is this, is this? no I can't I think it's, she was this, this actress was in 
They're saying Emma Watson is the sexiest, one of the sex hottest actress. Maybe they mean by popularity, hottest. Maybe. Liz, Kate O'Mara. Oh, Kate Mara, Megan Fox. My friend loved Megan Fox, like proper, proper fancied her like Megan Fox this, Megan Fox that. It's too hot in here. See, Gal Gadot, or Gal Gadot, Gadot who now plays Wonder Woman. I mean, she's she's really good. I mean, she's really good at Wonder Woman and stuff, but it's very hard to accept her as being Wonder Woman. Because she's not. There's only one Wonder Woman. That's it. I would not. I will not comment any further on that one. I want to have to lift myself up. This is uncomfortable, actually. The the back is too far back. So if I leave my head like that, it literally, I'm looking at the ceiling. <sighs> and relax. So I'm going to lift my head up. I can't think of a celebrity. I used to like Kel Kelly Brook. In the, you know, a few years back. But she's like now. Celebrity crush. Ooh, I'm just trying to think of singers or actors or people on TV. I'm not don't really watch much TV. There's a new newsreader, a newsreader I quite like. Um, I forget her name. She's on BBC. She's she's lovely. Um, oh. Trying to think. Oh, what's her name? The one with red hair. Um, I haven't seen her in much lately. She was in the. What was that TV show? At Mad Men. I liked her. She's also in uh, a TV show that I watched a couple of years ago. That was really good. Uh, can't think of anyone else really. There's not. Yeah, because I, I know that people, well, out out of the celebrities that I've seen in in real life, they often don't look the same. And some do. But I saw Jimmy Nail, who's famous in this country uh, he might be famous in America as well I don't know but he was he's really tall like really tall and I, I I didn't meet him but I saw him at this gig that I did and he was literally head and shoulders above everybody and he was right at the back because when you're that tall you don't need to you can be at the back it almost is not fair to be at the front because you're blocking the view for other people so, and I nearly said something to make fun of him, and I thought, no, that would be very silly, because there's no way out of this venue without going past him, because he was standing in the door in the doorway, crouching. <laughs> so okay, um, I met, I saw, I didn't meet him, but um, in the comedy club I used to frequent. Frank Skinner, who's a famous comedian in this country, was playing pool with another comedian upstairs in the comics room, in the comedy cafe. And I was surprised at how pale he was. One of the palest people I've ever seen in my life. Really, I think when he's on telly, they must put quite a fair bit of makeup to make him... Not look human, but uh, because he's really pale, like really almost transparent. It was weird and really slim. I mean, he looks slim on telly, but they do say that see the ads 
adds uh, weight to you, doesn't, doesn't it? So imagine how fat I'd look. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I have television eyes. So when I look in the mirror, someone's replaced my mirror, my mirrors with televisions. That's why I look so overweight. <gasps> wow, I never thought of that. So yeah, I can't really think of a celebrity crush. I used to like Miley Cyrus. Um, although I'm a little, it's weird. I kind of put off by her voice, not a singing voice. I think she's got a brilliant singing voice, but she's I don't know if I could I know it's not an option <laughs> I know it's not an option but I don't know if I could date someone with a, a deeper voice than me well not only that a deeper voice than any man I've ever met I mean it's literally it's for those old enough Lee Marvin she's got a voice like Lee Marvin oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, my name is Miley Cyrus. Wow. That's... I mean... I don't know if she's had her chromosome che checked to see... Because she's got a really deep voice. But I, I just liked her. That, that, um... That, that, like a... What was it? That song. Like a cannonball. Like a wrecking ball. Uh, that I like that album, and I know she was doing a kind of a Sinead O'Connor thing, you know, with like almost shaved head and close up to her face, which was you know very Sinead O'Connor, wasn't it? Back in 1980, blimey, was it 88 or 89, or was it 90, 89? Nothing compares, nothing compares to you. Or if Miley Cyrus is singing, it would be nothing compares, nothing compares to you. So yeah, I, I think she's, because I think she's married or she's engaged to Thor. I think the the actor who plays Thor. So I mean. He hasn't got much that I haven't got, apart from money, looks, muscles, youth, and <laughs> apart from that, he's we're almost identical. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I need to look at these questions before I answer them because, well, I did look at it before I answered, obviously, but. But that's part of the reason I like to do this is just to look at the question for the first time rather than to be sitting at my desk trying to think of an answer. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just let it be spontaneous. But unfortunately, I don't always have an answer. But I might do later. I might come up with some really good line in a month's time. Oh, Vinny's lying down. He's, I've got my arm on him, my hand on him. I'm just cuddling him. He's asleep. He's snoring. Oh, he's a good boy. He is a good boy, you know. I know he's he barks and stuff, but he's so friendly. Although, just a little while ago, a couple of hours ago, we went to the pet shop to get a treat or oh, I said the word to get him something from the sweet shop we call it the sweet shop so we're just in there got him a couple of things and we're just walking towards the till and I honestly got the biggest shock ever before you say it now there wasn't a full size mirror staring at me because that's rude don't say stuff like that to me there was this Alsatian being held back by this female and it was so loud it sounded so vicious uh, I don't know what its problem was but it made me jump 
really not, not just me everyone in his shop and I think it had a muzzle on but it's really yeah it, did, it didn't seem very friendly which I, I mean, it might have just been excited but uh, it didn't seem excited I mean I, I didn't look I'm, I mean when I say excited I mean it didn't it didn't sound friendly but I don't think Vinny sounds particularly friendly sometimes and I've discovered that he isn't always being friendly so I have to watch out when it comes to other dogs but he's got a thing for women he's really he has, really loves women much more than men he, he loves anyone that gives him attention but he's got he's really got a thing for women don't really understand it it might just be because the majority of people walking their dogs during the week are women, maybe. In the evenings and there's there's more men around or early mornings, weekends. But, you know, I not, don't really understand why that is. But, yeah, he just seems to see quite a few women and he loves them. Especially, he starts to, he, he recognises people now. So, you know, if he sees someone he likes, especially if they regularly give him treats, he's all over. He's like, treat, 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 give me a treat, give me a treat. I keep saying that word, and it's not the right word to say, is it? He's got his eyes closed, so I think he's asleep. He's just enjoying me stroking his head. He's such a little baby. Just been, I feel like I've just breastfed him, you know. Fed him his hand, fed him his food. And now I'm going to burp him. And now he's having a little sleep. Afternoon nap. Such a baby. But I guess really he's always going to be my baby, isn't he? He's always, he's always going to be a little baby, really. Even though he's not really a baby. So was okay. So I've done that question. I haven't really answered it very well. I'll admit that. But you know. <laughs> oh no. Right. So what's the next question? Right. Took me out of it. Why is that? <laughs> right comments all comments it keeps taking me out of the out of the page so Barry asks me hi what would be your perfect day or what age would you like to be again cheers that's two questions uh, what would be my perfect day what age would I like to be again? Hmm. I'd kind of it it depends. See, I can't just answer a question, can I? Has to, I have to make it more complicated? That's because I. It's almost like I say, well, I want to be this age, and suddenly I'll be that age again, and oh, I wish I'd thought it through, because it's not going to happen, is it? So why am I worried? Might as well just give you an age. But no, I have to think it through first. Let me just like that. Like it. I try and like when people are posting stuff, but I just lose track. I don't keep looking until it's time to do them. Right. Uh, what would be my perfect day? My perfect day would be... Um, it's going to sound weird but for the waking up debt free that would be a perfect day that would be nice a perfect day I don't know I've not really had any particularly 
I don't know if I've ever had a perfect day. Is that a song, isn't it? Perfect day. It's a perfect day. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, that might not be it, but there was a song called Perfect Day. I think. Um, the thing is, because, you know, even being on holiday, things like that, I'm not a sunbather. Because of my skin, I can't sunbathe. Never really been able to sit in the sun. I can walk around in the sun, but I can't just. And it's, it's I don't find it particularly interesting to do either. And I think when I was younger, I used to try and go on a beach, but part of the reason for that is because the beach was full of girls. And you know, without just in reality, you know, I was a teenager and. That was I never got never got me anywhere, but I thought at least I can. Well, yeah, I'm just thinking. I remember I was laying down once and someone asked me why my bum was rising off out of the sand. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was weird. I used to quite like sunbathing when I was very young. I mean, the last time I sunbathed was oh, probably a 16. It was a long time ago. Uh, and I think it was because I was trying to maybe make myself look better because I still had, like, my skin wasn't great, maybe spots and stuff because I was still a kid, still a teenager, and... I maybe I thought the sun would be good for me, so I used to go up on the on the rooftop above the chip shop. I used to go in there and sunbathe, and a couple of times I'd go onto the beach and sunbathe. And the thing I liked about the beach is the sound of the sea, and there was a degree a degree of quietness people generally didn't take they weren't like playing loud music and stuff I mean I'm sure you do get that everywhere loud music you know probably even then but uh, I just don't remember that happening it was very peaceful especially at a certain it was like this cove area that was you couldn't quite get to it you could only get to it from one side so you had to go all the way around and it was, I think when when the when the tide came in, you couldn't. Well, there was no beach. I think the the sea came up to the rocks. But you know, while the sun while the tide was out, it was nice. I just wish people had woken me up before the tide came in. But I used to hang around and sit on the rocks and in the summer, and it used to be quite nice. I used to be able to just hang out there you know even if not on the beach on this rocky area that's quite good last time I did that though was 1990 I think or was it 1989 yeah my friends my, my big brother's friend was a musician and we used to used to bring his organ out and uh, I never played on his organ but he used to he'd get his organ out and play on it and we'd like make some songs. Let's think of some songs, and then uh, and then he'd get his keyboard out, and would maybe do some music on there as well. So it's quite good. Um, perfect day. I don't know. Perfect day. I'd wake up, look in the mirror. And the weird thing about it, there's never never been one. <laughs> I'd wake up and I'd just look better. I'd look different. I'd look younger, younger. I don't think I ever really wanted to be older. I did, and I didn't. I suppose I did when I, because I used to look really young. Hard to believe, but it's true. I would always look younger than what I was. So getting served in the bars or pubs or 
off licenses it was very you know it's difficult for a while but if you live in a little town which i did at that time it's a lot easier what once once they if you get to know people and you know some of the people working so when i was 18 a lot of the people working in those shops i went to school with so they knew how old i was and there was none of this you didn't have to prove you know now there's signs saying if you don't look at least 25 we're going to ask for your identification why should someone have to look 25 if they're 18 how many 18 year olds look 25 Mm. Vinny, mm. calm yourself down, mate. Mm. Calm yourself down. Mm. Calm it, Vinny. No, mm. no. Otherwise, you're going to go in the bedroom, and you're going to be in there with the door closed. Don't flap. Mm. Don't flap your ears at me. Don't flap your ears at me. See now, mm. he's he, he's like a wind-up toy. As soon as he gets, that's it. He's going to go. <laughs> No, I'm not putting up with it, Vinny. That's enough. Please. Perfect day. I wake up. I'll be a lot taller. It's my fantasy. I'll be a lot taller. I'd have a massive um, head. My brain would work properly. That'd be nice. Yeah, wow. If my brain worked, um, I'd wake up. I did. I had a dream the other day that I woke up and I and I was physically fit, like abdominal muscles on the outside of the fat, you know, because at the moment they're hidden. Oh yeah, what do you mean you mean you got abdominal? Everyone's got abdominal muscles. If you didn't have abdominal muscles, we wouldn't be able to stand up. We won't be able to get out of a chair, you know. We all have abs. It's just they might not be very well presented, <laughs> hidden behind uh, lots of blubber. In my case, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the perfect day. I don't know, really. I mean, without getting all weird, I suppose one of the perfect days was to wake up and no, yeah, I suppose a perfect day to wake up and people that have passed away and aren't gone, they're still alive. And I had dreams like that when I've woken up and like my nan's still around. I've, I've had dreams where my friend downstairs is still around. You know, it's so, yeah, but that's, it's not real, is it? It's not a real thing. So, hmm. Sometimes a good day for me is, in reality, is when I've made a recording. I've got plenty of stuff done. You know, administration-y kind of stuff as far as, um, you know, uploading things, working on a website, uh, I've taken Vinny for his WALKs, WALKs, I suppose to be honest, really a good day is when I'm feeling okay, when I'm feeling good, for no reason, that's nice, don't happen huge amount of times but that can be nice I like hearing good news from other people that's nice it's nice to you know like my stepmom she sold she's an artist now and she sold a couple of paintings at an art, art exhibition so that was nice to hear it is it's nice to hear that someone's feeling better when they weren't before uh, little things I remember when when I had Andre and he the first time he had problems walking and he had in problems with his spine it was a year before he had it finally for the last time 
but I remember seeing him limping around and and then the day that I saw him walking fine or there, I've got a video of him when he's his legs still a bit limp but he's running around as much as he can dragging his foot along because he's he's enjoying himself and that was quite joyful to watch knowing that he was okay he was what he was recovering and then seeing him moving the leg again like normal was beautiful so yeah I remember that um Maybe would would the perfect day, day be a mixture of all the really nice memories? Those kinds of all things happening all over again. Maybe. Uh. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Perfect day. I probably have pizza. <laughs> I know it sounds weird maybe, but I'd probably have a pizza. That would be um, sweet corn and pineapple pizza from Domino's. That would be a perfect, that would probably be part of my perfect day. Maybe a roast dinner in the daytime, lunchtime. Uh, boxing. Like a really good boxing like in Dubai where they've got starts at four o'clock ends at midnight now it's a little bit too long for me I'll be honest it is however I look forward to it for weeks so when it gets here and it's the Friday before or the Thursday before even if it's not that one it might be just a a big a big fight that I'm looking forward to the the week is I'm just looking forward to it and when it gets to the Saturday all day long quite often I'm in quite a good mood because I'm looking forward to this this boxing in the evening or maybe it's early hours so I'm going to bed early knowing that I'm going to get up and eat my ready break while the boxing's on so it's things like that that give me something to look forward to yeah so getting to an ideal day would probably involve boxing being on TV, possibly a release of a, you know, a new movie that I'm able to watch that I perhaps I've been waiting to be released. So that that would kind of coincide maybe, or perhaps even uh, the release of a new season of a show that I've been waiting for. Another, yeah, and I guess it adds, add to that like a spike in stats so that I've had, you know, uh, a lot more, a lot more uh, listens than normal to my podcast. And I guess I'd have uh, also have suddenly another thousand or two thousand or, oh, yeah, I'd have like 10,000 subscribers on YouTube instead of 1,400 or whatever I've got. What else could I have on a perfect day? Text messages or phone messages from people that I know that run well, let me know that they're well. Got the all clear or, you know, something like that. That'd be nice. Well, that'd be that'd be beautiful. Um, I'm gonna get romantic now. Meeting the woman of my dreams, maybe, or probably the perfect day. Thinking about it, would be. Meeting someone that I clicked with, and just wanted to spend time with. 
So that that would probably be kind of perfect. And it wouldn't really matter what we were doing, I guess. But being on a date, maybe a restaurant, maybe, I don't know. But just no pressure, no, just, I don't know. And then boxing in the evening. But she'd be a boxing fan. And she loves boxing, so that would be cool. To have, so, yeah, to meet someone that likes the stuff that I like. Or I like the things that she likes. I mean, both, both the same, isn't it? Um, yeah, so that'd be nice. And what else? I'd be, yeah, it'd be, <laughs> okay, it'd be nice if suddenly, if suddenly the, um, for some reason sugar was healthy, that'd be a perfect day as well, so the idea of eating, eating loads of ice cream and chocolate eclairs and bars of chocolate and cakes, drinking loads of coke, was actually the new the new healthy diet and the problem with my blood sugar level wasn't because I was having too much sugar I just wasn't having enough and the more you have it then reverses it so that would be good <laughs> that used to be part of my perfect day lots of chocolate lots of cakes lots of desserts lots of you know fast food uh, yeah, I used to love it. It's just like pigging out, really. Not not all the time, but just every now and then, just eating lots of rubbish. Yeah, that was nice. But that was, you know, so that would be a nice day. If I was, if my blood sugar level was down to being human again, that'd be nice. But a perfect day, immunity to sugar. <laughs> But I definitely wake up taller. This is my dream. It's my my perfect day, and I'd be able to tap dance. I've always wanted to be able to tap dance. I'm trying to think what else there would be. Yeah, maybe winning the lottery as well. That probably quite a nice little cherry on the top, which meant I could. I wouldn't necessarily, it wouldn't change my life. It's such a lie, isn't it? Yeah, getting a couple of million pounds. Yeah, that wouldn't change my life. It's, it's the biggest lie in the world. So yeah, it would, but I would... I like the idea of winning the lottery for two reasons. Because the thing that I dream about, because I do sometimes fantasize about winning the lottery even though I don't even do the lottery I fantasize about winning because I could then what I do I imagine how cool it would be to go giving people money so I've got I'd make a list I make a list in my head about all the different people I give money to so there's the obvious first group of people which would be my immediate family like my my dad my stepmom my little brother, my stepbrother, stepsister. So that's the four. I mean, it, my friend downstairs obviously would have been one of those as well. Um, and then, then there's friends that I've got. So I haven't got many friends, handful of friends. So I'd give them all money. Probably nieces and nephews. Maybe put money in a bank for them to to set up an account or something so they can collect the money when they're 16 or 18 or something um outside of that i then there's a list of people that i don't know anymore that have helped me in the past that i wasn't necessarily even even grateful for or grateful to 
or showed any kind of gratitude at the time but afterwards realizing that uh, even, even people that have maybe not been great to me in other aspects but at the same time maybe he really did help me in some ways so I've got a friend who lives up north who we were good friends for quite a while but then we just fell out over something silly and well whatever it was and I would give him money because he did help me out uh, I might not give it to him face to face might just put it through his letterbox but you know give money to him um, I'd like to find people from the past and give them something maybe not like huge amounts of money because I'll, I'll end up running out of money if I do that but I'm trying to think people just as a gesture you know just as a gesture just yeah that's it really so I kind of fantasize about that giving every cousin every the aunties uncles cousins distant cousins you know basic you know give everybody even members of my family that perhaps I've not even met just give them something I thought about maybe having a big party I used to dream about this when my nan was around and we have a massive party and then I just give everybody money or they just have, there'd be an envelope on their table and they could all just take it with them, you know, sort of, I don't know, 10 grand each or something like that, depending on who they were. It, it would go up a bit more if it was closer. So 10 grand for distant relatives, but for, I don't know, brothers or for my dad, it would be 8 grand, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it would be... I always fantasize about that. It'd be so cool. So perfect day, yeah, that'd be it. I suppose really perfect day would be giving out food to people, give feeding people, helping people, and then coming home. So I suppose helping people, meeting the lady of my dreams, and then going out for lunch, and then coming home either with her or on my own and watching the boxing and then realising I won the lottery so that'd be cool and then making perhaps making a, a recording before the boxing <laughs> and eating a pizza and lots of chocolate so yeah it's my perfect day so what age this is Barry what age would you like to be again Oh, what age would I like to be again? Me, 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 me. I've got a few answers for that. Again, it's kind of like, oh, not quite as straightforward as it needs to be, I think. There's ages where, where things were going fairly well. And perhaps I didn't quite make the best of it. But maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, so, but not not one. There's never been an age where everything was going well, like everything, every aspect. So, for example, my living situation may not have been very good, but my social situation might have been quite good. You know. So it's it's never, if nothing. It's never been. Balanced, I would say. So I had a girlfriend in 2005, and potentially one of the best relationships or most promising relationships I ever had. And we were compatible in quite a few different ways, but it just didn't work out because of circumstances. So you know, even if I went back to that time, I could go back to in having fun again. But ultimately, 
there wasn't really anything I could have done to change how things turned out because it was out of my hands. But then I think, well, if I went back to when I was 15, um, I could make changes. I could do something different. I go back to being 15 again or 14, and yeah, there's a few, because I think the further you go back, the more, I mean, there's always options, but it just seems like there's more options in my mind if I go back to being 15 or 16 again you know I could have joined the army or the navy or the Royal Air Force and I did apply to join the army I didn't end up going in but or I could have become an apprentice with something uh, you know I could have there's lots of different things I could have done I could have travelled I guess I could have, there's lots of different things, you know, at that age, the options, it just didn't seem like there was any options, see when I was 15, 16, I didn't see, I didn't, I couldn't see any options, I couldn't, just, I felt like I was trapped in this little town working in a chip shop, and that's all I had, and yeah, that's, that's how I felt at the time. So I'd like, I quite like to go back to being 13, 14 again. When I was doing the karate, I was excited. I'd get up and I was excited to I'd be thinking about Bruce Lee and the martial arts, and I'd be watching kung fu movies, and I'd be practicing the karate, and I'd be on a punch bag down in the bottom of the garden, and I'd be training every day. Go, go training two, three times a week at the karate club. There was one on a Friday night as well in a different place, but Tuesday and Thursdays was the, the main one. And that was a good time, pretty much. But, yeah, going back, it'd just be weird, because it'd be quite neckering to go back to that. But if you go back, you'd have, I'd have to, wouldn't I have to still have that mentality of being 15 or 14? And unless, of course, I'm exactly the same person, which no one is, um, it'd be weird to go back to that because it'd be freaky, wouldn't it? Imagine going back to that and suddenly living in that situation sleeping in that room upstairs where I used to live and just yeah I don't know how I would because it's such a long time ago now I mean literally 14 that's over 12 years was it 14 24 34 44 54 40 years blimey isn't it weird though because between 14 and 24 only 10 years but what a difference you know being 14 and 24 is night and day it's like wow such a physically mentally so different and then 24 to 34 again it's quite different because it's just yeah 34 to 44 not so much it's weird. It's like there's that, you know, between 40 and 50, there wasn't really a huge difference between being 40 and being 50. Apart from I obviously get better looking with age, as everyone does. Hmm. So to go back, I'd quite like to go back to, yeah, I don't know. Do I, can I have a different brain? Can have a different brain. I go back and be a different person, but we just don't know where it's going to lead. Because I could go back to being fourteen. 
determined to stick with the karate until I got my black belt, which would have meant I couldn't take the chip shop because that was working evenings. It's a really, really silly decision to get a job that involved evenings when I needed my evenings. But I was I was determined to prove my dad wrong because he said, well, not wrong, but he said I needed to, I was about to leave school, I needed to look about getting a job. And I said, all right then. I took it as a challenge and I had a job by the end of the day. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think if I was to go back, I could, there's certain days I would go back to and definitely make changes. But ultimately, it's not possible. So, so I'm trying to think, what was a good age? Seven. Seven was a good age. Everything was new. Everything was bright. Everything was nice. Everybody was nice. It was good times. That period between seven and eight. So yeah, I'd, that'd be kind of yeah, that'd be an age that'd be nice to go back to, but. I wouldn't enjoy it now, would I? You know, it'd be weird because I've got this old head. So I guess the things that I enjoyed back then wouldn't be things that I'd enjoy now. If anything, I'd rather have been born later. It would have been probably much better in some ways to be, to have been born in 2000 when the internet was around and I could have perhaps become good at something because I'd be 20 now 24 I might you know be really gifted in AI or I don't know who knows I don't know so yeah thanks that's <laughs> probably no age I wouldn't want to be any age again I'd like to visit but that's, yeah, that's probably about as much. I don't. 34 was all right for a bit. It was difficult, but it was a challenging year. But it was definitely, you know, just thinking of the Christmas 2004 at my nan's. I'd like to kind of experience that again because that was lovely. Yeah, okay, I've spent too long on that, haven't I? This might have to be a two-parter. Because the problem is, if it goes on too long, I I can't fit it all onto a video. Mm. So Chris asks, I don't know how to phrase this, but I'll try. Where's all your hair gone? No. Is Let Me Boy to Sleep really just mindless, boring talk? <laughs> what? Or is there some type of sleep hypnosis going on, like your cadence or something? Okay, let's reread that first part. Is Let Me Boy to Sleep really just mindless, mindless, boring talk? Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> Is that when I talk? Do it just sound? Because this is just me being myself. Um, mindless, boring talk. See, to me, this isn't boring. I understand. I know it's called "Let Me Boy to Sleep," but I talk about things I'm interested in. So, uh, this I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. I'm afraid. Um, I guess it is whatever you want it to be. It. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it is because it's taken on a life of its own. It started off being kind of the, the second part of that question. I was very much trying to, when I first started doing these Let Me Boy to Sleeps, 
trying to incorporate hypnosis, relaxation, um, you know, trying to almost instigate that sense of relaxing and then your mind slowing down and you know you start drifting and stuff like that so but now I don't know I don't know so much it's I mean basically one person's interesting is another person's boring and I know, I think it, yeah, I think it's sometimes quite difficult to follow my stories because I don't necessarily stay on one track. I always zip around a little bit and go back and go forward and go sideways and I suppose sometimes maybe it's, it, it, it gets confusing for me to know who I'm talking about and what I'm saying and then I'll go from one subject to another then back to the other subject again later on and it's where does one bit start where does the other bit end so I guess there is that but that's just maybe it's because I've been doing it for so long that it just happens naturally I think when I started doing this I would almost maybe try to just play around with ideas and you know tell a story and let that story go on for way too long and to go into a direction that it doesn't necessarily need to go into to the point where it's impossible to follow and in the process maybe people listening would just switch off and fall asleep now I realise just by being myself I tend to do that anyway so yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure I just I think my normal speaking voice is kind of like this this is how I'm speaking I have to change it a little bit speed it up a bit maybe make my voice a little bit louder uh, perhaps have a bit more feeling um, maybe when I'm talking to humans like one on one and but also I don't get a chance to just talk non-stop and that's what I prefer over a conversation so I don't know why this is just easier for me this is not just this is really easy for me it's the easiest thing in the world to just sit here and talk it takes zero effort apart from when I'm not in a good space then it takes every effort and sometimes too much effort so I'm lying a little bit saying it's effortless but generally it is providing I'm in the right mood if I'm in the wrong, if I'm in the wrong mood and you'll never get to hear those recordings but sometimes I will talk for an hour and I realize that I can never ever release that because what I've said is just maybe I've been aggressive or I've been rude or it's I realize that this is just not nice so I don't don't release them so the only recordings I release are the ones that are either are just nice and gentle or maybe ones that I find quite funny as well and sometimes I do make myself laugh occasionally but I like I like ridiculous things I like I like stupid things I like idiotic things things that just don't make sense or just are just silly that, that's the kind of stuff I like nonsense that's the stuff that entertains me so yeah so I don't know what the answer to that I don't know if I've answered that Chris but generally just you know I just talk I don't really know what I'm doing anymore 
generally in life but yeah I don't know I don't know what to do with this next question Christine could you be Jason Derulo please be much easier when I search for your most recent thing um, I wish I was <laughs> obviously I mean I don't think many people would um, say no to being the sex god that Jason Derulo is but unfortunately I'm not uh, I'm not sure how he says Jason Derulo Jason Derulo I don't know um, Sky says only if he sings the name I'd die laughing I don't know how he sings it um, so anyway so Sky's got a question I think I've heard you mention that you did stand up at one time can you talk about that more I always thought you were funny thank you so it made sense to me when you mentioned it well my stand up career which it wasn't really a career but I didn't do very well I did about 250 gigs performances on stage between 1991 January and January 1998 so it's a long time since I performed on stage and it, I was 20 years old when I started I moved to London to do that that's the only reason I moved to London and I wasn't accepted some people accepted me but generally because I was quite rude quite rude very rude very aggressive I was back then if you think of I don't know Andrew Dice Clay Sam Kinison Richard Pryor uh, George Carlin and just Dennis Leary those were the people that I looked up to comedians They're, those are the people that I kind of aspired to be like but unfortunately I didn't realise that a lot of they, I didn't have their talents um, and I didn't have the the genius that was behind those comedians I mean even I mean Andrew Dice Clay is a character it's not him it's a character that he plays uh, a real a-hole if you want to say but I love those kind of comedians Sam Kinison there was a time I used to go on stage and yell at people but it wasn't funny he did it and it was funny I just apparently ye yelling obscenities in someone's face on stage isn't as funny as it looks like on television <laughs> it is just as brave though because I can't believe I did it not now um, but yeah I I started getting better by about 93 and then by 95 I was doing it very infrequently because during 94 I'd hardly didn't do much at all in 94 95 I did some it was all dependent upon you know working or where I was living at the time 96 I did hardly any because I was working as security 97 I didn't do much and then 90, at the end of 97 I did and then beginning of 98 my last gig which was awful as well which was a shame that I ended up on a on a bummer a very a bum note as it were but it was a, it was a good experience it was fun at times I got to meet loads of people that were already famous and others that went on to be famous so that was kind of a little bit it's quite nice to tell people oh I used to know Jimmy Carr I used to know I used to well not know but I used to know like Lee Evans to say hello to and um, I've met all these people that I used to know to talk to like Alan Davis and uh, trying to think of a few more now off the top of my head can't think of anyone um, Mark Thomas 
I'm not sure. But there was a few over the years. I used to know to talk to Spider-Man's dad, Dominic Collins. Because uh, his, his son is Tom Hollins, who's Spider-Man. The current Spider-Man. So I used to know him because he was a comedian. He was at university when I first met him. And brilliant comedian. So yeah, I'd, it was good. But I wasn't any good, really. I One of my best gigs when I went on stage and I didn't do any material, I just acted silly did silly voices just talked to the audience and for some reason and probably the first time I'd ever been myself on stage and it went down really well and I didn't I think I might have recorded it I might even have the recording somewhere but I was just talking and I think I was talking about the weather and just chatting and I was in a good mood and it couldn't have gone any better honestly it was a really small audience in the middle of Hertfordshire like in the middle of nowhere really but it was lovely absolutely lovely so if I was if I was able to if I had been able to like bottle that and put it you know create something out of that then I, I think I might have been might have been successful so yeah and that's it really I mean it's a lot more I could say but it's it, yeah I did it for quite a while most comedy clubs told me I got banned from quite a few comedy clubs because I upset the audiences and people would walk out one comedy club closed because of me um, it was just a it was a night in a pub like it was a comedy club on a Tuesday night in East London somewhere and I went on stage and I, I just said the wrong things and the the owner of the pub or the landlord whatever closed it down said no to the to the the comedy promoter and when you're not coming back anymore and that was it so that probably didn't help my career the yeah there's other stuff, but I've, I've talked about it before. Maybe I'll talk about it again. Maybe I'll do a podcast just on that, maybe. But it's, it's such a big subject because it took up quite a lot of my life, quite a, quite a few years of my life. But, yeah, so I did that for a while. But I was no good. I mean, I had some really good nights. I mean, it's, I wasn't awful all the time. I went from being awful to being okay you know okay and then I went from being okay to being eh, you know good and bad up and down like a like a a yo-yo or a, a swing or I don't know whatever just it's kind of sometimes good sometimes it's like the, the bad ones weren't as bad as they used to be and the good ones were better than they used to be. So it was going in the right direction. And then I got into the news. I got into kind of more up-to-date stuff. Social stuff. You know, things that were happening. So I talk about that. And things went quite well when I did that for a while. And instead of relying on the same jokes over and over again so that that was quite I quite enjoyed being a bit more I don't know if irrelevant is the right word but it was a bit more interesting because I got bored doing the same thing every time saying the same thing the same opening line and that's the thing with comedy is especially when you start out you find something that works, you stick to it, and you, you until you've got enough for a good five or ten minutes where all your jokes work. I'm not sure if I ever got to that point ever. <laughs> there was always some weak links in there. I think the main weak link was me. So thanks for that 
uh, Sky. Uh, Christine asks, what will you do to celebrate your birthday and happy birthday in advance? Thank you. Um, what will I do to celebrate my birthday? I don't know. It's on Monday. What is it? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's three days. Hi, right, Vinny. Stop fidgeting. Why don't you just get up here and cuddle with me? Okay. Oh, you've got to look at me like that. Um, well, thanks for the happy birthday message. I beep 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 beep. I don't know. What will I do? You know, what I always used to do for, for a long time. I used to when I lived in London. Every birthday, I would go into the West End and maybe buy a book. Maybe not buy a book, but just go to the West End, have a look around the book shorts, shops. Maybe walk around Leicester Square and have a McDonald's and then come home and I just like just have an afternoon out so that used to be something I would do quite regularly maybe if it was if my birthday fell on a Wednesday Thursday Friday or Saturday I'd go to a comedy club any other day and comedy clubs weren't open so I didn't generally so yeah, that's what I used to do. Now, I won't, I won't be seeing anybody. I'll just be sitting there with Vinny, and the only people I see is the ones I see on the on the walk with taking him out and that. I keep saying that word, and he hasn't looked up once. He's listening though. His ear pricks up when I say it. <laughs> It's really weird. He's, he's asleep, but his ears up. So he's listening. Because normally when he's asleep, his ears are down. So he is listening to what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably nothing. Uh, it's Monday, so perhaps watch a movie. There's not really anything to do. Uh, it's a bank holiday Monday, so even if I wanted to go out, I couldn't. There won't be any buses or anything like that. Um, everything, well, not everything, but a lot of stuff will be closed on a bank holiday Monday, I think. So yeah, not not won't be doing a lot. It's it's a weird one because although I'm getting older, 54, it, it's not an actual like, it's not a milestone birthday, is it? Like 50 was or. I guess 60 will be. 65 used to be a landmark because that used to be retirement age, but it isn't anymore. I can't retire till I'm 67. So that'll be a landmark age. And then 70, then 80, I guess 90, 100. To be fair, I think every, every year, once you get to a certain age, should be a landmark birthday. Should be a mile, a milestone. Because... A lot of people don't get to that age, do they? A lot of people don't aren't lucky enough to to be in their eighties or nineties. I think every year, every year deserves a to be marked. But for me, fifty four. I think I might try and mark fifty five, but fifty six. Because at the beginning of two thousand twenty six. That will be 20 years that I've been making recordings. Not the Let Me Boy to Sleep, but it'll be 20 years since I started doing hypnosis stuff and things like that. So that'll be the 20th anniversary. But as far as the Let Me Boy to Sleep, so I've been doing this since 2018. So two years after that, 10, the Let Me Boy to Sleep will be 10 years old in four years time four less in fact just over three years time or three and a half years so three and a half years is that right or am I wrong three uh, 2018 so two, eight, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 Three and a half years, yeah. 
Did I say that? Three and a half years. This podcast will be ten years old. I wonder how many people in the world have got a podcast that's lasted ten years. Can't be a huge amount of people. I mean, there are people, I know, but it can't be... There's not, like, huge amounts. They might have a podcast that's ten years old, but they stopped making podcast episodes, like, eight years ago. So... To have one that's 10 years old and still producing recordings. Like, wow. Wow, baby. So there's a few markers. But thanks for your birthday wishes. I don't have any. I'd like to probably get a pizza. Domino's. Because that's something I don't normally eat. But to celebrate. Um, (sighs) Yeah, this is going to be my first birthday for nine years where my friend's not been there. So, yeah, that's going to be weird. Just, yeah, because normally, even if I don't see him, like, for a large a large part of the day or anything, I'd still see him for, for a while. So, yeah, that's going to be strange, yeah. Um... So thanks for that. So I don't know really. Damon asks me, and this is a question, I, this is an answer I could take hours answering, which I think you're quite aware of if you've listened to me before. <laughs> oh dear. So let's have a look. Dubois or Joshua, Usyk or Fury? So for those that don't know, this is a boxing question. Um, Dubois and Joshua are fighting on the 21st of September. Usyk or Fury? So Usyk's fighting Fury in December, isn't it? I think. (sighs) Right. I'll start off with who I want to win compared to who I think will win compared I first of all I was always a big fan of Joshua I still am a fan of Joshua Anthony Joshua former heavyweight champion of the world twice but um, I really like Dubois I followed both of them from the very beginning of their professional careers I mean Joshua there was he was Olympic gold medalist in 2012. So I guess he had a bigger profile coming into the professional game. Well, he did. I guess that he did. Um, Dubois was... His sister was the famous one out of the two of them, as far as amateurs go. And she's also a world champion boxer. So... It's really hard when two people you like are fighting. The same is with Joshua and Usyk. I like both of them. Uh, for different reasons. I, I think Usyk is such a character. I know Fury is, is, is obviously, but Usyk, I've been following him since he was a cruiserweight. And he went through the cruiserweight world title thing. This is about five or six years ago. But I've been following Fury since, blimey, I was the university when Fury was fighting. So it's been a lot longer watching him and remembering him winning the world title in, was it 2015? I mean, blimey, you know? It's like nine years ago when he first won the world title. So I've been, I've watched every one of his fights. I've watched every one of Usyk's fights as well. I've watched every one of Joshua's fights. And I think I've seen every one of Dubois' fights. So here's my prediction. (laughs) I don't know. My prediction. I'm not going to say who I want to win. Because I kind of want all of them to win. I know it's not possible. I think Joshua against Dubois. I reckon... Joshua has the advantage in experience. But he's an older man. He's older than than Dubois. He's got the experience. 
like really huge amounts of experience advantage but Dubois is young fresh possibly a lot stronger bigger than Joshua and he's improved so much in the last couple of years he's also Dubois has been in with Usyk the same as Joshua has and other than I mean he did get knocked out by Usyk but before he got knocked out he put Usyk down with a body shot that was classed as a low blow but it was on the belt now you know in some fights you get away with being doing on the belt sometimes you don't it's up to the referee so I, I'm going to say it's uh, Joshua's going to be the, the the favourite but I kind of want to see Dubois win but I also so when Joshua fought um, and Ben oh what was his name and Ben and Ben Ben in I forget his name now but Joshua fought the UFC former heavyweight champion and knocked him out after Tyson Fury had been taken the distance by the same man Ngon Nganyu 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 yeah Nganyu Ng I think it's uh, I forget how to say it so um, but Dubois is improved dramatically over the last couple of years so and he beats the one the the number one challenger unbeaten a few months back I mean in fact he's beaten two unbeaten heavyweights back to back one was uh, Miller big baby Miller unbeaten former challenger to uh, Fury no it's not to Fury to Joshua but got banned for drugs so steroids so he didn't get to fight but he was the number one contender or he was definitely going to fight anyway and then um, he Dubois fought I forget his name now but he was classed as kind of the, the boogeyman of the heavyweight division nobody wanted to fight him and it was almost accepted that he was very possibly going to be the next or one of the one of the next of future heavyweight champions and both of those Dubois stopped both of them if I if I'm correct so Dubois could quite well go in there with Joshua Joshua might not be expecting anything too much thinking well he's been in with all the, most of the best boxers in the world you know over the last decade so Dubois shouldn't be difficult for him but I think he might underestimate he, if he underestimates Dubois he might end up losing but Dubois won't underestimate Joshua you'd have to be really really dumb to underestimate uh, a former two time world champion he's, but someone like Joshua he's, he's I don't know I reckon Dubois might cause an upset and it will be a big upset regardless of the fact that Dubois is actually the world champion I don't think anyone really thinks that he's going to beat Joshua might sound strange but if Joshua loses isn't it weird that the world champion if the world champion wins their fight it's going to be a huge upset you'd think it'd be the other way around but no uh, Usyk Fury okay I've said this before to someone I don't know who if Fury comes in takes the fight seriously doesn't mess around doesn't stick his tongue out and put his hands behind his back and all that stuff that he doesn't need to do everyone knows he can do that stuff if he goes in there on a demolition 
that, that if he has the same mindset that he had in the second Wilder fight, then Usyk is going to end up on the canvas. Because when he's in that mode, I don't think anyone can beat Fury. Because just his size, his strength, and Usyk is he's not a big heavyweight. In fact, he's not even going to be a heavyweight for much longer because he doesn't like all the eating he has to do to, to keep the weight on. So he's not a natural heavyweight. Uh, Fury is arguably the most natural heavyweight there's ever been because he's just naturally huge. He's a giant. So all Fury has to do, I say all, I wouldn't want to be in a ring with either of them, but, and I'm a big fan of Usyk as well. If Fury doesn't do that, Usyk will just out outbox him. I don't think Fury can outbox Usyk. Fury is one of the best boxers in the heavyweight division, but Usyk is probably the best because he just doesn't stop. <clears throat> so I I reckon if Fury keeps with the uppercuts, uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. That's all I would say to him. Uppercut all night long. Usyk can't take them all night long. I don't think anybody could. So that's it. That's my prediction. Fury will win on the uppercuts. Whether it's to the body or to the face, whatever. He'll win on that. Or Usyk will win on points. I mean, there's a chance he could. He caught him last time, so he could. He might catch him again, but I don't think Fury would allow that to happen again. Um, so that's my prediction. I'm looking forward to both of those nights. I was just looking at the. Uh, the do there's another really big night coming up in October, so that it's between. So basically, September, October, and then even November, December. There's three massive nights. So the next one is the 21st of September, which is the Bois Joshua. October is. The light heavyweight world title between unification between Berbatiev, Berbatiev and I forget his name, but them them two, it's gonna be that's of that on its own. Just that on its own is enough, regardless of anything else. That's something to look forward to, and I have been. They cancelled it before, so they're the headliners. I think it's in Dubai. The undercard is, I think, Shakur Stevens is the undercard defending his world title. He's a he's a superstar on his own, so that would be he he's never been on the undercard. I don't think for for years. It must be weird to be such a to be on the undercard, you know, when you're used to being at the top of the bill. But he's probably getting paid more than he normally does as well. Then there's Eubank Jr.'s fighting someone. I always like watching him fight, but I don't know quite why he's further up than the next fight down, which is Fabio Wardley and what's his name? And it's a rematch of their last, well, obviously it's a rematch has to be of the last fight, doesn't it? It's a rematch. So... Their last fight was one of the best heavyweight fights I've ever seen. And I'm glad that they're doing it in Dubai because it means that they're getting paid the proper money that they need to be getting. I mean, it's, that's a headliner on its own. I don't know why they didn't have that. Well, I suppose it's not going to be... That's never going to be above a world title by Shakur Stevens. But I just wonder why it's not above Eubank Jr. But it might be because Eubank Jr.'s dad, you know, Eubank Sr. and Eubank's brother was very close to, he lived in Dubai. So they'd, maybe there's that, they've got the links there, I don't know. Um, but Fabio Wardley fight. It's worth it's worth entrance just for that, because there's no way it can be anything else but the same. Fabio doesn't fight any other way. 
he's going to win or he's going to lose. I know it sounds obvious, but although that last fight was a draw, so that, that was probably a stupid statement. But he goes all out, and I've not seen many heavyweights that do that. They go all out. He, he just chucks everything. He leaves nothing, leaves nothing in the ring, or he leaves everything in the ring, whichever way you want to look at it. So thanks for that, Damon. Um, I probably went on a bit too far then. Went on too long. Robin asks, no question. Oh, you know, I'm quite relieved there's no more. Oh, there was another question, but it's quite nice. Uh, just wishing you a very happy birthday in advance. I also have an August birthday. What are you telling me about your birthday? I'm only interested in mine. Robin, <laughs> listen, my birthday is the one that's important. <laughs> I'm joking. Happy birthday. Everyone wish Robin a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Robin. Happy birthday to you. Did you like that? Happy birthday. Uh, Kate asks, what was good about your day? What was bad about your day? I never know how to answer those things. Every day is the same. Sometimes it feels like it's the same. Is it the same? I don't know. Is it the same? Every day is the same. I don't know. Um, hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. What have I done today? I ain't done much, if I'm honest. What's good about the day? Probably doing this recording. That's a good thing. Bad about the day? Nothing really. Nothing bad. Just... Yeah. No. No. Nothing bad at all, really. Just a... Uh standard day everything's gone to oh yeah everything's been all right Finney seems quite happy um mm, yeah don't think there's anything anything bad about the day today the day today I mean, it's not over yet but it is getting on what is it 7 46 in the evening so i will edit this tomorrow morning early so this will be released on Saturday morning. Yeah, that's it's not really anything particularly different that's happened today. Vinny was happy earlier. I did I woke up so I woke up early, about five o'clock. And I had my breakfast about quarter to six. So I did some stuff on the internet or made some videos and stuff like that. And then I went back to bed probably about half seven or seven, maybe. I didn't wake up till half nine. So that was quite nice to wake up late because I'm normally up long before that. As if, if I go back to bed for a little bit more of a sleep. And Vinny seemed, he was relaxed and yeah, I got a fair bit of uh, internet stuff done, Make a f made a few more videos, uploaded them to YouTube, Pfft, I don't know what number I'm up, but nearly, nearly 200 now I've done, they're not released, but there's nearly 200 produced. Uh, from the backlog, the archive of the Let Me Boy to Sleep. i um, still been uploading recordings to the website. So I'm up to 500, over 500 Let Me Boy to Sleep recordings that you can download for free. So I'm still doing that. That will take, that's going to take me a while because I've still got all the deep sleep whisper ones to do 
So I'm st at the moment I'm doing the Let Me Boy to Sleep. So I'm nearly halfway through them. So it's it's going to take a while, which is fine. I just I do maybe twenty to fifty a day if I can. So that's twenty or to fifty new pages with uploading the large file which in, you know so it takes a while but it's yeah it's coming together by the end of September most of it will be completed I'll, I'll definitely I reckon the the let me boy to sleep will be completed and the deep sleep whisper will be on its way to being completed and that's when I can start looking at some other stuff I thought I'd found a podcast that I could do um, and use a podcast service, but it just didn't. A new one, to, you know, to replace the old one I used to use. But I couldn't upload large files. They just wouldn't accept the large files. And that's no good to me. You know, if I can't upload the 10 hour ones, then it's pointless. So I'm just going to stick with SoundCloud. It's still getting shared with all the major places, you know, but it's, it'd be nice to break up the podcasts again, just to have the individual ones like I used to, but there's no point doing it unless the, the recordings with music five hours and ten hours are on there, because the ten hour versions are always the most popular. I might find a way up. If I just keep, I just keep looking. I did a trial on this Captivate, it's called, and spent a day doing it yesterday, trying to upload stuff. It allowed some 10-hour ones, and then for some reason, it just got stuck. Then it wasn't accepting these, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know. The files were probably just too large. That's all. So that's it. That's me done for today. The good thing about this is I can now just turn everything off and do the editing, processing and uploading in the morning. So it's nearly 8 o'clock. Oh, I'm going to cook myself. I'm probably going to have an omelette. So I've still got some chicken last night from, from last night in the fridge cooked so I'm going to make a little omelette put the chicken in and have that for my for eat my evening meal no oil so it's going to be very much stuck to the pan I'll be doing this saucepan as well because I've got no frying pan so it's going to be probably a very burnt mixture between an omelette and scrambled egg with chicken <laughs> it's going to be a less <gasps> you know what I could do oh I don't know if that would work because sometimes people do omelettes and they put the, the frying pan in or under the grill because then it, it kind of cooks the top so you cook the bottom quickly and then just put it under and it cooks the top so Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. But then you got if it's gonna be chicken, you need to cook it so it's hot, don't you? If you're gonna heat chicken up, you eat it cold. But if you're gonna eat it hot, it needs to be heated to a good temperature. Unless I do scrambled egg with chicken, which is basically what's gonna end up like. I don't know. I don't know. So that's it from me. Thanks for listening. So remember, thank you, thank you for your birthday wishes as well. It's Monday, Monday, 26th of August. Wow, 54 I'll be, 54. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. 
not so loud. 